Apart from that, I have made one thing for sure that I kept a variety of problems like one from kind of like a fronted oriented uh, design discussion, one from a back end oriented design discussion, one from a machine coding oriented design discussion so that you can get a wide variety of question, I would say examples and you can get a better clarity on what to expect. Sometimes also this kind of question can come up that how can you design your own Google Drive? Hello everyone, I'm Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, this is going to be a pretty interesting video. If you have seen recently, I actually uploaded a couple of videos around different different type of low level design, high level design type of questions that are asked in a lot of companies. But this time, in this particular video, I'm going to talk about some of the most interesting and frequently asked design related questions in Google. Right. So whenever you are going to interview for Google L5 or beyond kind of roles, there is a high likely chance that a couple of rounds might consist of some kind of a design discussion. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about a couple of questions through which you can actually map the difficulty of what kind of questions and what difficulty of questions you can actually expect in a Google interview. Apart from that, I have made one thing for sure that I kept a variety of problems like one from kind of like a fronted oriented uh, design discussion, one from a back end oriented design discussion, one from a machine coding oriented design discussion so that you can get a wide variety of question, I would say examples and you can get a better clarity on what to expect in case you are going to interview for a Google L5 or beyond kind of roles. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel because we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead on this channel. So let's just start. So before moving forward, I would like to discuss about a brand new offering that we have at AlgoCamp. So if you are somebody who already knows software development and are very much intrigued by the crazy amount of stuff that you can actually develop using the knowledge of your software development, then this is going to be something interesting for you. So if you are somebody who loves to take deeper dive into everything and wants to understand that how exactly scalable systems are developed, not just on the high level part, but on the low level coding implementation part as well, then we have actually launched our brand new system design course, which which includes both the low level design aspect and the high level design aspect of the scalable systems. In this particular course, with respect to HLD, we are going to talk about a lot of systems, including system design of things like Uber, streaming systems like Netflix, how you can actually design your own ad click aggregator, how you can design scalable notifications, how you can design code deployment systems and many more. There are tons and tons of high level design problems that we have added. Apart from that, there are a lot of interesting system design concepts that we have actually added, including design patterns like Saga pattern, anti-corruption layer pattern. We have also added orchestration pattern and some other interesting aspects around caching layer, blob storages and whatnot. This is going to be a power packed course for high level design. And along with that, there is low level design as well, where we are going to talk about solid principle. We are going to talk about tons and tons of different design patterns. And we are going to solve a lot of problems, including designing your own logger, designing kind of like a chess game, designing kind of like a book my show system, a split wise and whatnot. This low level design part is going to technically prepare you for any kind of a low level design or object oriented interview, as well as for your machine coding interviews as well. This is going to be a definitely a power packed live course where we are going to talk about everything end to end in system design. And we have also added some additional topics around concurrency and testing as well. So what are you waiting for? All the details about this particular course is actually mentioned in the description section below. Go there, check it out and use this particular coupon code to actually get the maximum possible discount and see you guys in the course. That being said, let's go back to the video. Now, one thing to note here is that if let's say you are actually interviewing for L3 or L4 roles at Google, L3 is the fresher software engineer, which inside Google is called as software engineer too. And L4 is the, uh, I would say mid-level senior engineer, or you can say software engineer three in Google, or you can say SD2 across the rest of the companies. So whenever you are actually entering for L3 or L4 role, you do not need to actually like prepare a lot of things around system design. Why? Because both L3 and L4 rounds consist of majority of data structures and algorithmic question. So if you are somebody who is actually at L3 or L4 kind of like role and is going to interview for those kind of roles only, focus more on data structures and algorithms, right? You can find tons and tons of articles uh, on lead code discussion section where people have actually talked about what kind of questions were asked to them in their Google interview. Like now, in case you are going for L5 SD3 uh, in like companies like Amazon or like the across the rest of the companies or beyond L5 kind of roles, then there is a chance that you will be actually having dedicated design rounds as well, right? 
so now we are going to talk about now as in the expectation is set so now we are going to talk about what are the different set of questions and what difficulty of questions you can actually expect in these kind of design rounds so let's say in case you are going to actually go for a front end oriented role then this is kind of like a very common question that is asked a lot of times in google interviews so a lot of time you might have seen online web ids right like code sandbox or let's say repelit or in fact the google idx project idx as well all of these uh, online ids has one common pattern that you can actually come up and build a project directly on the web ids right so whenever you are actually building a project most of the time your code doesn't consist of just a single file you have a lot of files which are nested across a lot of folders just think about it let's say if you have a react project so inside your react project you will be having let's say one folder which will be having all the components right inside that folder also you will be dividing your components let's say into atoms molecules and organisms then apart from uh, the components folder you will be having a hooks folder inside the hooks folder you will be having some custom utility hook folder and some api hook folder apart from the hook folder you will be having having some api folder one folder will be for let's say context and then apart from that inside these folders there will be a lot of files there will be a test folder and what not so there is a very nested for overall folder structure hierarchy that you generally see now a lot of time what question is uh, asked in google is that let's say if you have to actually design and implement this kind of a folder structure representation on the web ui how can you do that such that let's say all the root level folders and files are initially shown then when you click on a particular folder the remaining content of the, the inner content of that particular folder is shown so all the subfolders and subfiles are shown then let's say you click on any subfolder then it again expands and you are able to see more files and folder across that uh, particular subfolder and so on so this kind of a folder structure representation how can you actually implement is sometimes actually asked in google so this is also called as a tree outline of the overall folder structure so a lot of time you might be asked to actually design this how will you actually handle let's say are you going to store the whole uh, i would say component data like across all the files and folders at once or you are going to fetch it again on again on apis sometimes it might be expected that you also code this component structure right you might be having this tree outline component and you will be expected to code it like how will you actually code this tree structure how will your recursive calls is going to look like how you are going to manage the ui everything you might have to answer so this is kind of like the level that you can technically expect in couple of questions if you are actually entering for a front end oriented design role at google now in case you are actually interviewing for some back end roles and if you have a high level design round then this is a very frequently asked question at google so a lot of time people can actually ask you things like how can you design your own blob storage like for example something like azure blob storage or amazon s3 right these kind of services so how can you design your own blob storage and very like in case uh, sometimes also this kind of question can come up that how can you design your own google drive because Uh, applications like dropbox and google drive internally uses a lot of blob storage so either you might be expected to design a blob storage or maybe some application on top of blob storage as well in these kind of design questions all of your requirement analysis then your basic system design then your deep dive into any particular problem statement of the design everything is going to be checked you will be expected to also do api designing so that the people can actually interact with this blob storage right you will be expected to also handle the high availability kind of cases because you also need to ensure that the overall system availability is high you will be also expected to handle discussions around how will you do the backups of the data that you are actually storing inside these kind of blob storages what are some of the nitty gritty details that you need to keep in mind which makes these blob storage design uh, technically a bit different from the uh, other type of products that are generally used right what can be some good applications where you see blob storages being used and so on so a lot of different different aspects around blob storages or some applications on top of blob, blob storage like if let's say you are designing dropbox then you will be storing your data in some kind of a blob storage but how will you synchronize it across devices how will you actually achieve that right how will the upload on the blob storage is going to work right are you going let's say if there is a very big file so are you going to like upload that whole big file in one shot or would you like to go for a chunk by chunk file upload kind of a scenario apart from that would you like to put the file upload on the blob storage directly directly from the client or you would like to do the upload from client to the server do some validation on the server and then from server to the blob storage like this whole kind of design is something that can be expected out of you and you will be actually judged on how deep of an understanding of a system you can actually have again it's a, it's a system design round so there is nothing right nothing wrong it's all about how, whether you know whether you know trade offs or not and whether you are able to sail through the hints that the interviewer is actually giving you so this is the kind of difficulty and the type of question that you can expect in a high level uh, design round at google 
now a lot of time there can be a case that your design round is more or less like a machine coding or a low level coding design round where you are also expected to code a solution right and that solution requires some algorithmic knowledge and apart from that you are also going to be judged on your i would say uh, solid principles and the overall code maintainability part so a sample problem that is very frequently asked in google is that let's say a lot of time you might have seen the find utility in linux that can actually help you to find a particular file or a folder based on any kind of an input for example let's say inside a folder you want to find all the files that end with .txt extensions right so how will you design this kind of a utility what will be the complexity analysis in this kind of a utility right how you will decide the input and the output structure how the user is going to give the input how you are going to design the classes for this search uh can you actually support m different different type of search strategies uh that can be actually available in this kind of a utility right how can you make this utility more extendable that let's say if some other utility wants to use this find function or this find utility of linux how can you actually implement it right so this is the kind of question that you can expect in kind of like a machine coding kind of a discussion because here you will be also expected to do some algorithmic analysis on how you will implement this kind of a problem statement apart from that you also need to prepare this whole utility in a way so that it is extendable and it is manageable and maintainable as well because again find can have multiple searching strategies right so maybe there is a default strategy but you might want to give your user a chance that they can also decide a strategy that which is going to be technically used in a particular type of a search on the find so this is something that uh, can be asked and the main focus on these kind of rounds is again your algorithmic uh, i would say complexity analysis and the algorithmic correctness that whether your algorithm is working fine or not apart from that how you are actually structuring the code whether the code is clean or not whether the naming conventions are good or not whether you have followed the solid principles or not whether your code is eventually extendable or not and whether you are able to understand that uh, like if there are some trade offs that you have actually kept in mind what are those why you have kept a decision for a particular kind of a design all of these things are going to be judged in this kind of questions so these were some of the type of problems i believe you are able to actually get the difficulty level that what kind of a difficulty you can actually expect i won't say this is like the extremely difficult question because if you see the dsa aspect of uh, problem statements in google there can be even more difficult dsa question that can be asked i would say these are uh, i would say moderate to moderate hard kind kind of questions so if you are actually having some kind of design uh, round i would say prepare these kind of aspects also apart from the regular system design questions that you generally have like designing let's say youtube designing let's say uber uh, apart from that also try to have some domain specific kind of problems just like how i mentioned about the front end part or maybe some kind of an algorithmic touch up here and there can also be actually asked to you because overall like when you go to a l5 or beyond l5 role things actually expand a lot and you have a lot of things under your belt so you also need to actually showcase this particular skill that you are able to design different different aspects of different print systems and you have the overall knowledge about not just design but all the also the algorithmic part or the domain specific part of the system so i hope you all overall like the video if yes please don't forget to hit the like button and if you have any thoughts do uh, drop them in the comment section below i would be happy to answer any questions if you guys have and if you want me to make problem statement related c to uh, to other companies as well if you have some interviews lined up do let me know i'll try to research on my end and actually help you with a couple of uh, most frequently asked kind of design and data structures kind of questions that will be really very helpful for your upcoming interviews as well that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to continue our discussion on a lot of things around tech and career till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off